The current timeline for the COVID-19 pandemic begins with a cluster of viral pneumonia cases that emerged in Wuhan in late December 2019 and reported to the World Health Organization on the 31st of December 2019. By the 7th of January, China had isolated a sample of the novel coronavirus, sharing its genetic sequence with the world to develop diagnostic kits on the 12th of January. The next day, Thailand reported its first lab-confirmed case, followed by Japan on the 15th, South Korea on the 20th, and the US on the 21st. As the virus spread around the world, Wuhan went into lockdown on the 23rd of January, and the WHO declared a world health emergency on the 30th of January. The next day, both the UK and Italy declared their first cases. As more countries confirmed cases of what was by then being called the SARS-CoV-2 virus and the disease it causes, COVID-19, it was on March 11th that the World Health Organization declared the outbreak a pandemic. As of July 2020, more than 10 million people worldwide have been confirmed with SARS-CoV-2 and over 500,000 have lost their lives. But there is new evidence that suggests that the virus was present in the global population before testing could confirm cases in January 2020. A relevant body of evidence already supported the hypothesis that SARS-CoV-2 had been circulating in Italy as well as in other countries. And we have now evidence as early as the end of 2019. I'm talking about uh, some surveillance study conducted on healthy blood donor in the province of Milan during the COVID-19 epidemic, which showed at the beginning of the outbreak, uh, 24 of uh, February, that two percentage of donors displayed sar of two LGG antibody, which means that they were probably, highly probably, been infected before. And also many reports by GRI, literature and media reported the significant increases in the number of people hospitalized with pneumonia and flu-like symptoms in the areas of Milan and Lodi between October and December 2019. The virus was still unknown at the time, and the diseases would likely may be considered flu-related. More studies suggest the presence of coronavirus earlier in northern Italy, including 40 tested sewage samples from Milan and Turin that picked up coronavirus in December 2019. In Brazil, the Federal University of Santa Catarina tested wastewater samples from the 27th of November 2019 and found the presence of SARS-CoV-2. Whilst in France, evidence suggests coronavirus may have been present since mid-November, deduced from analysed chest X-rays that are very similar to coronavirus-linked pneumonia damage at the Albert Schweitzer Hospital. The virus obviously has to arise somewhere, and then it travels. Now, the French cases, it wasn't pandemic then, it was just a little handful. And that's how pandemics begin, little clusters, and then it passes away. It's also how pandemics end with little clusters. And uh, then uh, it moves into the big time when it's the air, and the airline routes are clearly the way it spread. As scientists continue to check samples going back through the year, there has been evidence to suggest the virus was moving around as early as March 2019. In Barcelona, wastewater samples have been tested for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Detectamos en marzo de 2019, no lo detectamos en abril ni en mayo ni lo detectamos en febrero. Es difícil hablar de cifras, pero realmente estamos en los niveles parecidos a, a a lo que ahora encontramos. En aquel momento, en plena temporada de, de gripe, pues muy pro, bueno, pro, el, el, el SARS coronavirus 2 pasó desapercibido. Now, this predates the first case of uh, COVID-19 in Barcelona by about 11 months, if these results are confirmed. We have other studies, uh, like for instance from Brazil and from Northern Italy, that show a uh, similar but later pattern. Uh, we also know that, for instance, in France, uh, there was a, a, a case of uh, COVID-19 in late December.
this would suggest that the, uh, uh, the viral uh, spread was far larger earlier than what we thought. And uh, where it originated from, how it uh, adapted, uh, when it adapted, we don't know. You, you get that from every researcher you speak to. <laughs> we need more data and more data. Now, you've been quoted as saying that the, the virus sort of hangs around, it lies dormant until the right conditions come along. What, what are those conditions? Not necessarily this uh, virus, we don't know that, but if the Barcelona results are confirmed, it would certainly suggest that kind of thing. But let me just take you through, for instance, a study that was done in 2012 in two kindergartens in Copenhagen, where they tested the surfaces, uh, things like toys, covers, uh, play tables and so on. And they, these were uh, heavily positive for all sorts of respiratory and enteric viruses and microorganisms, which is what you would expect. We live with these, uh, they're all around us. The question then becomes exactly what wakes them up and what makes them aggressive, uh, what, what conditions makes them aggressive. I'm afraid I don't have an answer to that. What we have is a series of uh, hypotheses uh, studies, for instance, that looked at the meteorological conditions, ultraviolet, levels of, of uh, pollution, uh, wind, humidity, and so on. As evidence mounts to indicate the presence of SARS-CoV-2 in the global community several months before it was first officially detected, more studies and research will be needed to try and identify how and when the virus spilled over into humans. Do you feel that this is just really what we've discovered so far as the tip of the iceberg? It's probably going to go uh, very much like the early days of HIV. Uh, we're just uh, um, beginning to understand what we were dealing with. Uh, and yes, indeed, we're just discovering every day. I'm, I'm reading stuff which is, uh, to me, is incredibly interesting. I just finished reading a paper which gives three possible evolutionary origins. Uh, for this particular virus, uh, but the paper is incredibly honest. It, they say that the, 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 the data is so thin that any new data could swing against the other two hypotheses in favor of one. So we're just, we're just ignorant. But ignorance and uncertainty are the engine of science.